Welcome guys back to a new video. Today we're going to be going over some executions and trades that I took today and starting to dive into a little bit more complex concepts and starting to really understand price action and kind of my bias and my ideas of viewing price action today. Um, I want to show you guys just the chart of all the executions that I took today um, because it is very, very precise. Everything seems to have a purpose to it. I have conviction with where with where price wants to go, and that's going to be kind of our main topic today. Is going into today Monday, which I expected to see actual you know choppier action today because it's a no news Monday. But I was very uh, fortunate to to see that we did have clear and concise action today, and and I took advantage of that, and I took advantage of my conviction with it, and we ended up taking uh, some really nice setups. So, with that being said, let's jump into the charts and just kind of show you guys what we're looking at here. So these were the trades that I ended up taking today. And we're going to go uh, into all of them. There was around three main ones uh, and talk about the reasoning behind them, why I believe price is going to where it was, and my bias going into the morning, You know how my bias shaped out, and just kind of replay this entire action. I'm going to replay this entire action of today and go through each trade that I took and talk about why I took it, why was my bias like that what why was i expecting price to do what it was going to do and uh, really give you guys an understanding because uh, people will show you this execution and then they won't tell you ex you know why they took it they, they like to hide the secret they like to hide their knowledge and i want to give this to you for free on youtube and just show you guys my understanding of price and my conviction with price and why i expected and why i took the trades that i did today so what i'm going to do is i'm going to completely clear this chart so i'm going to go to just completely clear everything on this chart and the executions and we are going to go into today and review everything price action replay and talk about my bias going into the morning so the first thing again going into the morning just going to the daily what's my bias going into today well looking at the four hour what did we just end up take we just ended up taking sell side liquidity so Going into the morning, am I going to be bullish or am I going to be bearish? I'm going to be pretty bullish long term, right? On a bigger time frame, like the four hour and on the one hour, I'm going to be bullish. But there is specific things that need to happen first before I can actually take a trade. Even though I'm bullish, that doesn't mean I'm automatically going to long every fair value gap I see on a five minute or a one minute, right? Because that is too zoomed in action, right? They're two different time periods, understanding that price is fractal. Okay, so now that I have a bigger time frame bias, my four hours bullish, let's zoom into a one hour. Okay, what can I expect here now? Well, what else are we sweeping? We're also sweeping this internal sell side liquidity right here. So not only are we sweeping sell side on a lower time frame, but we're also sweeping sell side on a, an external time frame, which makes me very bullish. Now, what do I expect here just by looking at this chart? Just by looking at this chart, this to me looks like a clear inversion model. And what I'm looking at is this one hour fair value gap. Now, I'm watching to see this either hold or this to get ran through. If this gets ran through to the upside, I know for sure that we will take this high. Now, I don't know if we're going to come up, take this high, which I probably expect us to. But for right now, when I'm looking at price, I am expecting us to come here. So let's go back to the open. Go back to pre-market and let's zoom in now to the 15 minute. Let's go to opening price, which was right here. We'll go back a little bit so we can zoom into the one minute here as well. So looking at price here, am I looking to take any trade here in the morning? Possibly. Am I going to look to take a short? Probably not right now. Because we just ended up taking sell side, I'm looking for this to get bought up. So what are the trades that I could possibly take here? Well, I zoom into the five minute. What am I looking at here? Well, I can see a, po an, a possible trade that you could take that I actually didn't end up taking. I wasn't watching the charts at the time, but a possible trade you can end up taking here, clean this up here, is noticing this five minute time frame when we come down sweep internal here. This then gives you an opportunity to take a trade towards buy side because not only do you have that external level swept, you also have that internal model. So you're trading two different long models, which is giving you extra confirmation, right? So looking at the five minute, I can then say, hey, looking at this, we, we've now come down. We have a five minute fair value gap continuing to hold this. If I zoom into the one minute here, we can see we've come down, swept all of these internal lows here 
now having displacement back up, I'm looking to see, you know, possibly come down. If not, just take a long here and take it on the bigger time frame, five minute. And what I could do here is take a long at open and put my stop, again, targeting buy side and putting my stop either at the low which is probably the best thing to do here because I wouldn't want to see that low. But I do want to give Price an opportunity to maybe come down here, sweep this low, and then bounce, right? Because I'm going to put it here because I'm trading that bigger time frame as well, right? So market opens. You can see we ended up coming down actually right here, sweeping that internal lower. They're actually forming equal lows. And then ended up at open, just super straight up all the way to buy side. Again, notice the efficiency in Price. This is what I want you guys to notice. I've been saying for the last three months that summer months are always going to be more choppy. Now, the last three months of the year is when we start to see good action. Now, what does that mean when I say good action? When we have a clear draw on liquidity and we have a clear buy or sell model, price moves efficiently. You'll notice that in the summer months when we have some sort of model or we have some sort of clear buy side or clear sell side, in between that in, in you know time period, we get a lot of choppy, slow action it is not efficient. Price does not move efficiently towards whatever the draw is. Notice the efficiency and quickness in price when we have a clear draw. Notice sell side gets taken. We get break to the upside. We rebounded this very like if we hold it and we go straight to buy side, right? That is efficiency in price. So now at this point in time is when I start looking at the markets. I didn't take that original trade, but you could have. And now at this point in time, I'm watching price because this internal buy side level has now been taken. So I am possibly looking to take a short position, but not yet. I need to see more in price. Now, a lot of people here are looking to take shorts. This is too early, way too early to take shorts. Notice structure is just now starting to form, right? I want to see more structure. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. Again, this nice bullish fair value gap right here. I'm watching to see if this maybe holds. Again, at this point in time, I'm still a little bit more bullish. I'm possibly expecting to come see new highs because notice there's no break of structure to the downside yet, right? We have no low that has been broken through with displacement to the downside. Notice this low gets broken. There's no displacement here. When we get this big candle to the upside, I'm now expecting price to probably run back towards those highs. And as you can see, now we come back and we sweep internal. So at this point in time, again, I'm still waiting still waiting for price. And now I'm looking for this level to be now a sweep of this high to then possibly go back lower. Because again, we've now swept external, we've swept internal, but now I want to start to see us sell back off to possibly this low, this low, and these lows down here. So again, I'm still waiting for structure because I need to see a model. I need to see internal structure swept, displacement to the downside on a fair value gap. Okay, now we get an opportunity. Now, why is it now we get an opportunity? Because this is the first time in price where we have gotten displacement through a low. Notice, we have buy side now swept. We have buy side external swept. We have buy side internal swept. This is now that manipulation move. And we get displacement through a low. So now this is where I'm looking to take a low risk short setup. So. Now, this is where I'm going to introduce standard deviation. I plan on making a whole standard deviation um, video this week. But for example, and just for the sake of this video, I will draw it in because this did have a lot to do with my bias going into today. Now that I see this manipulation move and I see this distribution to the downside, I now want to start to see where price could possibly bounce because we have a lot of lows here. We have one low here. We have one low here. We also have equal lows down here. Now, what's going to be the highest probable area for me to take most of my position off? So this is when standard deviation comes into play. Now, standard deviation, you draw in as a projection tool. If you don't just take trades off of it. You use it as a projection tool to then give you external bias and added confluence and added conviction onto whatever your, ex your, your already existing bias is. Now, you can see when we come in and put this high in here, notice the last high that gets put in right here before the sell-off move, we take whatever the previous low is, which would be here. So I draw in standard deviation like this. I go from the high to the low, and that gives me my projection. Now, 2 to 2.5 is where I want to see price go. Most of the time when I'm using standard deviation and we get our manipulation move with everything else, right? When we get external swept, internal swept, and we have a clear existing bias, 
That is where I want to see price go. Now, a lot of the times when you draw these out, you will see an existing level or sell side or buy side liquidity line up with whatever you're watching. And notice this 2.25 area lines up really nicely with this sell side level. So this is my main target right here. This sell side level is my main target. Now, I don't have as much confidence that we're going to come down here. So I am going to take most of my position off here to secure profits. Because if I take if I come down and, we, and I take off like a quarter here, there's a big possibility that we're going to come into this standard deviation area and bounce back to the upside. And I want to take advantage of what I'm confident in and then let my runners do the work, right? Because I am always thinking of my entries and my exits based off of my level of conviction. Now, I have a high level of conviction that this is going to get taken a lot more than this is going to get taken because of standard deviation and because of the projections. So let's see how this ends up playing out. This was the first trade I ended up taking. We come back into this area right here. Let me um, put on, actually, well, never mind. it doesn't really matter. This is my first trade I ended up taking. Again, this is perfect 2022 model. You have sell or buy side swept, buy side swept, displacement, downside, fair value gap. I take the short. Where's my projection? I'm looking to see here. We come down, we come down, we come down. We pull back one more time into this breaker, reject to the downside. Now I see another fair value gap. And again, I'm nowhere near where, dis where I think standard deviation and where my projection is going. And noticing this price action, I can notice price is very, very clean here. So I'm expecting this fair value gap to get respected. So I add to my position here. We come back into this other fair value gap and I add another short position, moving my stop lower, right? Because in this initial entry where I'm taking this short here, my initial stop here is at the high of day. And I'm looking to see sell side, right? Now, I am now adding to my position. So my average now goes from here to around here, right? Now, what do I want to do with my stop now? Right when this stop, right when we reject this fair value gap, I'm managing my position and managing my risk. If we hold this for value gap, we should not come back to this high until we come here, right? So I am moving my stop now to that high, noticing the risk to reward here now. Not only, notice, this is what I want you to focus on. When I add to my position here and I move my stop loss, my average gets moved to here. So this is now an added position trade, which my risk to reward now becomes 4.85. And when I lose or if I get stopped out on this position, I am now added an extra maybe point or, you know, one R to this trade stop, but my win is significantly bigger. Now, I want to bring out paint here just so I can give you guys an understanding of the math behind this and understanding of managing risk, adding to a position, right? Now, if I enter here, right, just, just for an example, just, you know, simple, let's say I add a position, right? And it's, you know, one con of NQ, you know, whatever that is, you know, whatever you want to say, let's just use a unit. And we'll use the unit as one, right? So if I'm here, I have one short position. Now, if we end up selling off in my stop for this, right? So I'm in one contract. My, my, my max loss for this is, let's say, minus, minus one. And my PT for this is plus four, okay? Now, this is just an example. Like, the numbers are going to be off, but just, just understand what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to say here, okay? When we get this move to the downside, right? And I'm up on my position and my average... Let's say my average is 500, right? It's just, it's just like, let's say we're talking about a stock, just random, right? Just random numbers. My average is 500. We move to the downside. I then add to my position at 400. So now my average on this trade is now 450, okay? So my average now becomes 450. And my original stop on this was 550, okay? So 550 was my original stop. And now my entry, my original entry was 400 or not. Sorry, sorry. My original entry was 500. And now my average is 450. Okay. Now what happens here? My new average is 450, which is a, a little bit worse than it was before because I'm short. But what happens to my risk to reward? What happens to my expected P&L ratio? Well, if I'm in, let's say, $100 worth of this position and my average is 500, but it gets moved to 450, that means my loss potential is now 200 if it was the same stop. But now that I move my stop to 450, my 
risk is going down or staying the same as what it was before, but my win is now significantly more because I have more to buy position. So this is the key to averaging into a position. When I have my original stop here, my original entries here, and I get respecting of this, and then I'm confident with my draw, right? I'm still confident that we're going here. So I move my stop lower, I add to my position, and if I get stopped out here, I am losing the exact same as if I entered here to here than I would be here to here. But if I win on this trade, it is significantly more than if I just entered my single position and let it ran. Does that make sense? This is what scaling into a position is. This is what managing a trade is, right? How to get the best possible risk to reward, how to get the best possible opportunity to let your winners run, take advantage of winning positions. This is why my winners are so much bigger than my losers is because I scale into my winners. And when I lose, I cut them early with singular positions. And even if I enter this position and I get stopped out here, the risk that I'm assessing onto this trade in my managing and in the management of this position is still a very small and reasonable loss than it would be if I over leverage or I less if I move my or I left my stop up here. But the more that you start to manage your position, the more that you have experience with understanding, adding and moving your stops and using that conviction that you have, because I have conviction we're going here, right? But I'm using that to my advantage to then adding to my position, moving my stops, giving myself an opportunity to take advantage of that, right? So my second ad, and then we get a beautiful sell off and I end up taking off my full position at sell side and at that two to 2.5 area. So now, boom, this out of my head. First trade's over with. I don't care. It's gone, right? All right. Now, what am I looking at now in price? Because, right, this, this trade's fully over. I don't care about it anymore. Price has told me what it wants to do. I'm fully out. I don't care what happens next. I'm, boom, fresh head. I'm watching price snack. All right. So now, I'm going into price completely new now, right? Okay. So what is happening now? We just ended up sweeping that buy side level. We've now come back down to 2 to 2.5, and we've now swept internal sell side. Okay. What am I watching for now? I'm watching a C. If we either bounce here and we hold and possibly break to the upside or we sell off through this and go to these equal lows here. So now I'm waiting for price to tell me something now. All right, we're waiting, we're waiting. Noticing we're respecting this area really, really nicely. We're starting to get bounce, bounce back up. We come back down. Boom. Oh, sorry. I actually clicked it. Uh-oh, go back. Right here. This candle move to the downside. Notice internal has not been swept yet internal external has been swept i'm now waiting for this low to be swept boom internal gets swept right when this gets swept this to me is automatically turtle soup entry 2 to 2.5 is getting respected notice the hesitation to go if we want to go lower here we should get displacement through this low so now what i'm watching what is my entry here right when we i am not looking i'm expecting price to be fast and concise Right when this fair value gap gets broken through to the upside, I am automatically jumping into a long. Why is that? Why is that? Because price has told me that it's done with whatever it's doing. This whole model that is now short, this whole entire short model has now finished. Now, I don't know for sure that it's done, but what I am getting out of the action being told to me is, hey, we've just came down a standard deviation. We're holding our 2.25 projection. We've swept internal sell side. Notice the hesitation of price to go lower. We've swept internal liquidity. And now we're having a big displacement to the upside. And the next candle, boom, runs that free value gap. Boom, I'm in long. I'm jumped in long. Now, where do I expect price to now go now, right? Where do I expect price to now go? So notice, I am not waiting for a break of structure and a fair value gap. Now, that is, a, that is another trade I could take, and I actually end up do taking that trade. But for now, this is my early entry trade, which is a complete different opportunity. Now, notice the risk on this. If I was to wait for a break of structure to the upside, and then a fair value gap, my risk gets skewed. But if I enter here, I get a better opportunity. So now, I enter long. What is my projection here? Where do I expect price to go? What is my first take profit here? What is my first take profit on this specific trade? Now, the way that I'm thinking about this is I do not yet have conviction that we are going to buy side. Why is that? 
because with this specific entry in this specific model I'm trading, I have gotten no break of structure yet, right? I need to see displacement through this high for me to validate that the bias then goes here. Now, what am I for sure of though, just by looking at this chart? What am I for sure of? Or very confident, not for sure, but what do I have conviction with? Well, we've now respected two to 2.5. We swept internal. This fair value gap has gotten ran through. We have displacement of the upside. I have confidence and conviction that we now go back to discount in 50% of this entire range that we have now made. So we have this entire range that we've been working off, this low that we've now just put in. I am confident that we now go to discount of this range. Notice, comes down, respects the inverse fair value gap, displacement to the upside, big move to the upside, and I ended up taking off my con right there as my first trade of this setup. And that's it. Because I'm taking what I'm confident with. I'm taking what I have conviction with. Now, what is my mindset now looking at this chart again? Boom, that, that trades out of my mind. It's gone. Right when I'm selling, okay, I'm looking at something new. I'm like, all right, what's going on now? What's happening? Okay, what am I looking at now? What has now happened that's giving me conviction? We've now gotten a break of structure to the upside with displacement, and we have a nice fair value gap here, right? But this first initial trade that I have here, the only conviction I have for this is here, right? So I take it off at 50% because that is what that specific model has told me, right? Now, I can leave a runner, but for me, I'm trading what I'm given. And if there's another opportunity and another reason to take along, then I'll take it. And that's the next trade I take. When we get this move to the upside, we get internal swept, we get 2.25, we're having displacement to the upside. Now, this gives me a bias that we want to go to buy side. Now, what else? What else have we now had now? We've now had that manipulation move, right? So, I now whip out standard deviation again. And I take this manipulation move where we have that last low put in and that high and that low that gets broken through the first one. Where can I expect price to go here now? 2 to 2.5. And I draw in the consequent encroachment of this area. Okay, so now I have a bias, right? My bias is we go back to buy side and we go back to, to uh, standard deviation projection. But what's my entry going to be here? I zoom out. I noticed that we ended up creating a five-minute fair value gap. This is where I'm looking to now take a long because I have everything that I now have seen. Now, not only do we have a five-minute, not only do we have a three-minute, but we also have this one-minute fair value gap. And this is where you're looking to take a long entry. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, boom. Everything has now happened that I needed to see happen for me to get a valid entry. Notice the patience and the discipline of it. I am not looking to take any trade unless I get the best entry I want. Notice we have a fair value gap right here. I feel like people would long this because they're afraid to miss out on this move. Wait for the market to give you the opportunity to get the best risk reward possible, right? This was the, the second trade that, or the third trade I ended up taking. I enter long in the five minute for value gap, overlap with the one minute. I put my stop at the wick low right here. Beautiful risk to reward. And I let us ride. Displacement up. And I end up taking off my first contract right here at standard deviation point one. My first contract's taken off right here. Again, what's my projection? Buy side. Where do you think price ends up stopping? Now, I ended up taking my full position off at buy side because when buy side gets taken, that's all I need. That is what I have true conviction with. Now, let's see where price ends up stopping. We have our standard deviation projection of two. Notice right here, we came down, touched it, touched it, touched it, reversed. What do you think is going to happen here? And Q initially sells off. We come up, we come up, we come up. Boom, taps, taps again. 
sells back off to the downside. So this is the level of precision and understanding of the draw and understanding of price action that I want you guys to be able to get to. Now, I did not expect to see this clear and concise action today. I did not. I'm going to be completely honest. I, can, I can't predict that. I go into Mondays most of the time expecting choppy action, especially when we have no news. No news Mondays is a lot of the time when we get choppy action. Today, we got clear and concisive action. And when I have conviction with that and I have a clear understanding of what action wants to do, I'm going to execute with that. So today, I want you guys to take out of these executions, understanding why I did what I did. I'm here to explain it. I'm not here to just show you this and say, oh, guess. I'm here to really give you an understanding of why I traded, why I traded it for you guys to understand and be able to do this on your own when you can consistently backtest these ideas. And the more time and effort that you put in to just watching the charts, reading price action, the more experience you have, the more that you'll be able to do stuff like this and just have a better understanding and have better conviction and have better confidence on what the draw and liquidity is and just understanding of price and yourself and your trades. If you enjoyed this video, Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, let me know if this benefited you in any way, and I will see you guys in the next one. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace out.